shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who is fearless. A young loner on a crusade to champion the cause in a world of reckless automobiles. These are my motor vlogs. So today, I'm actually using my 360 camera. Today I'm using my 360 camera. I've been actually having an issue with this camera. About a week ago, I picked up this 360 camera, brand new, and it cost me in the neighborhood of about $500. And it's been working, it's been working fine, no issues. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my camera started getting funky on me. But what do you mean, Chris? Well, I'm glad you asked. I started having some issues with, you know, trying to turn the uh, camera on. Power up issues. And also having some power down issues. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? I thought maybe it was something that I was doing incorrectly, but it's the same procedure that I was using to turn the camera on by holding the power button and turning the camera off by holding the power button. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, I just started getting some, you know, some glitches with this camera. And that's one thing about these cameras that a lot of people may not even consider when they purchase them. A lot of these cameras are made overseas. A lot of them are made over in China. You know, I started looking into my Insta360. I didn't, wasn't really paying that much attention to it, but this thing was made over in China. Then it made sense to me. You know, just like GoPro. You know, these cameras has their issues. If you guys saw the last video where I was actually uh, installing the half helmet kit inside of a half helmet, the Cardo Pac-Talk Edge, I ran into so many camera issues just doing that video. And it tells you, just gives you some literature about wire management. We don't need that. The problem that I was running into is that the GoPro was shutting down. And that's one thing about the GoPro that a lot of people may not realize is that these cameras have heating issues. The GoPro cameras have heating issues. I haven't experienced that with the 360 yet, but I'll come back to the 360 in a minute. These cameras have heating issues by GoPro. You know, back when I picked up my first GoPros, my GoPro, I think it was my GoPro 4, I put out some videos talking about the heating issues. And that's been a while ago. If you guys missed those videos and you want to check them out, I'll include a link where you can watch my older GoPro issue videos the problem that I found with GoPro is that when you run those cameras in HD or high definition and you increase the frame rates to get a good clear picture the camera starts heating up on the outside so we're gonna so they have heating issues the battery swell, you know, you may have a regular battery and try to put it into the camera and now it won't fit. Or if you get it in there, it's almost impossible to get the battery out because the battery swells up, you know, behind the overheating issues. And these are some of the things that these camera manufacturers are not going to tell you. Because when you're watching these YouTube videos and, you know, you notice you will always see these guys snowboarding. These cameras work better when it's cold out. So you'll see them snowboarding, or you'll see them in cool environments, you know, maybe diving, you know, in the cold water. Or you may see them even jumping out of an airplane. You know, when you get up to high altitude like that, you know, the higher up you go, the colder it gets. So you may see a guy jumping out of an airplane. The, fo the footage looks amazing. So they're in colder environments. Those GoPros work better in colder environments. So what they don't tell you is that when it's warm out, when the ambient temperature is hot, 
the cameras are shut down. They have a fail safe. They basically have a, a overheating protection uh, say, a fail safe that keeps the that keeps from damaging the camera. And what it does, it shuts the camera off. It just shuts it down. And it don't have to be really, really hot. You know, like I said, the last video that I was recording, one of the last videos back when I was doing the install, the uh, pack talk on that half helmet, the garage was probably, I don't know, maybe 80 degrees, 85 degrees or so. And my GoPro cameras kept shutting off. And that's the thing about these. Just the ambient heat. So in the middle of that video, it was shut off. So I would actually edit out the part where it shuts off and then uh, stitch those, those video clips back together. And so you will never know it on your end. But I had a lot of just even creating that that video and these are some of the things that we as content creators we don't really talk about we don't talk about the problems and the troubleshooting that we we have to uh, go through when we're doing videos you know we just show you the finished the finished product and it may look good but I'm here to tell you that these cameras have issues man you know I wish that there was an action camera that was made in America that was made of high quality. If there is, I don't know about it. If you guys know a good action camera that's made in America of high quality, be sure to put it down in the comments section below. But all of these cameras, for the most part, that I know of is made overseas. I'm trying to keep my eyes on this traffic and gather my thoughts. But a lot of these cameras are made overseas. And what happens is that they produce so many of these cameras and people will buy them and start doing the videos and they'll start you know putting up the, the material and it looks really good it looks real good as far as the resolution and everything but what people are not telling you a lot of time is that the issues that we have the issues with overheating and cutting off and battery swelling these action cameras are good for short bursts that's why when you see a guy jumping out of an airplane, you know, his video may be one minute. You know, these action cameras are good for short, for short bursts. But we'll use them, you know, we'll use them for longer videos. You know, I use them in motor vlogging. You know, I may record, you know, for an extended period of time using an action camera. But these action cameras are good for short clips. And that was one of the issues that I was having with the GoPro. Now here we are, fast forward to the Insta 360 camera. Now I'm having issues with my Insta 360, powering up, powering down. I was able to get the camera turned on with quick capture and I could get the camera to record. The problem is getting the camera to shut off. So how I shut this camera off I'm having to take out the battery and so I plan on taking this the 360 camera back to where I picked it up to see if I can maybe swap it out or get another camera because it was working fine at first I, it was working perfect you know I don't know what happened I didn't do anything different so these cameras have their issues and it goes without saying so don't be surprised you know that when you watch these videos, people are not telling you about the problems that you can experience with these things. They just look good, you know. I wish we would bring some of our manufacturing back to this country. You know, there's nothing wrong with picking up cameras from overseas, but, you know, we need some things made here in America. I'm watching this traffic, man. Everybody's impatient. You know, you got a lot of cars out here. All of a sudden, people want to jump and change lanes. They don't know if they want to go right or left, forward or back. And uh, I'm just trying to pay attention, keep my eyes on a, on the road, and keep my head on a swivel. You know. Nobody wants to leave early. Everybody wants to 
but at the last minute and then when you're running into traffic you're making bone bonehead decisions and bonehead moves see everybody want to jump at the last second that's why what caused a lot of accidents people wait to the last second everybody's impatient I don't know why people blowing their horn my horn loud too how about that got to be really careful out here man on these motorcycles you know I was talking to a a guy on yesterday and he was telling me man uh he was telling me do you know uh I guess this was a famous person. I'm not sure what their name is. It's somebody I never heard of. I guess he was a football player or something. And he was saying, man, yeah, man, this, this guy, he he lost his life on a motorcycle. I said, no, I didn't hear about that. I don't know why people, when they see you riding a motorcycle, they want to tell you all of the motorcycle horror stories. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If you got on an airplane, would you go tell the pilot, hey, man, I was watching a video of a plane crash? No, you wouldn't do that. So why would you tell a motorcycle rider? And I guess people do that just to make general conversation. You know, I, I get it, but you know, motorcycle is it? Motorcycling is inherently dangerous. It really is. So when you're not a when you're not a rider and you go to talking to a rider who's actually on his bike about. You know, somebody possibly losing their life. You know, you could actually shake their confidence. It's possible. I mean, it doesn't shake my confidence, but depending on the rider, you could actually shake their confidence. So I wouldn't recommend just going to a rider and saying, hey, man, you know, did you hear about such and such and such, you know, getting killed on the bike? You know, you know, just tell them, hey, man, be safe out there and, uh, you know, keep the rubber side down. Just say some words of encouragement. So I'm just out here rambling on my gold wing, y'all. I'm just looking at this traffic to my left, man. I'm glad I'm not going that way. I'm glad I'm not in that traffic. Woo! <laughs> A lot of times, one of my viewers, he said, Chris, where do you be riding, man? It don't be no traffic. <laughs> it be a lot of traffic. I just avoid it. So I'm glad I'm not on that side over there. But yeah, motorcycling is dangerous, especially when you're riding down a road where there's a lot of red lights. You really have to be careful because you got people turning out in front of you. You got people that, you know, you, you're going straight and they're, they want to turn and they think that you're fixing to stop and you're thinking that you're going to keep going. So a lot of times a car will turn out in front of a rider and you don't want to be going so fast that you can't correct. So that's why most of the times you guys will see me on the interstates. No, that, not that the interstates is not dangerous, but cars don't generally cross your path on the interstate. They come from your side. So either way it go, you still have to be prayed up and be careful. Keep your head on a swivel. Keep eyes in the back of your head. Expect the unexpected and the things that you think a person won't do, expect them to do it. You know, you have to keep a wide, a wide field of view when you're out on this motorcycle. And that's why I like my big gold wing. I put the lights on here. Not because I want to have the prettiest bike, but I want to be visible to the other motorists. You know, a lot of times people ask me, well, why do you ride in the left lane? Because where I live, and some states are different because some states have exits to the left, not just to the right. Well, where I live, most of the exits are to the right. So you got people coming on, like this car to my right, and you got people getting off so everybody is going to the right which is a very busy lane that's why a lot of times you guys will see me i'm in the left lane because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of moving parts going on in that right lane as long as i'm not impeding traffic and when i get into an open stretch and i'm not you know everything is is, is cool then i'll get back over and some of you say well chris you don't have to explain yourself to these people you're right, but you'll be surprised how many people just make those comments. Because they because I'm not doing what they think I should do. 
The name of the game is be safe. The name of the game is arrive back to your destination safely. You know. So that's my biggest thing. Erring on the side of caution. But anyway, just getting back to the cameras. These things have their issues. When you watch these videos, you see guys doing these amazing stunts and jumping out of airplanes and skydiving, just doing all kinds of things. And it looks good with these with these cameras. But what they're not telling you is that these cameras have issues, man. They have issues. And I got to figure out what's going on with with this camera. You know, I've done everything I can do. I've changed our batteries. I've went through the settings. I've done a factory reset. I went through all kinds of troubleshooting trying to figure out why is my camera doing what it's doing? Why is the power button not working? Why, you know, why can I not power this camera down? And I actually reached out to uh, the manufacturer on yesterday, but they was closed. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? You sell a product, but your customer service is closed on the weekend. When that's when a lot of people shop and buy products. You would think that they would have hours on the weekend, at least for a few hours. But I'll try to reach out to them today and see if there is something that I can do. The latch ditch effort. You know, they may say, well, you can try to maybe update it. I'd have the current updated version. So I don't know if a new update would work or if they need to uninstall and reinstall an update and maybe that would work. I'm not sure. That would probably be the last ditch effort. If that doesn't work, I'm going to try to take this camera back and I want to do this today. I want to do this today. It's working, but the only way that I can power this camera down is I have to pull the battery out. And that's not right. And the only way I was able to get it turned on, I have to turn it on via quick capture. I couldn't just turn it on the normal way the way I was turning it on when I purchased it. So I don't know what made it change. I didn't change any settings. It just, all of a sudden, it just started glitching. So I'm just out here cruising on the on the Honda Gold Wing. A lot of people are heading out today. Here in Cordova, is anybody watching my video from the Dover? I'm out on my 2016 Honda Gold Wing. I was looking at one of the comments. Somebody said that, man, that my bike looked like a spaceship. <laughs> well, I have been called a Gold Wing superhero from time to time. You know, these bikes are really fun to ride, but you know what makes it even better? When you get out on the open road, that's one of the reasons why I love to. I like to travel, man. I like to get out on the open road. You know, I, I don't like to be in congested inner cities, you know, where there's a lot of traffic, you know. That's why a lot of times you'll see me on the, on the interstates and you'll see me traveling and guys will say, man, you're always riding in a straight line. I like to do the back roads, too. I love the back roads. Sometimes for a slower pace, different scenery. But with these touring motorcycles, they're at their best when they are on the open road. Especially this big gold wing. Man, I've been offered many times of selling my bike. Well, people have actually offered to buy my Honda Gold Wing. And it's like, man, I can't get rid of it, man. I just really love the the way it feels, they don't make the bike like this no more. You know, I love my DCT, but every time I get on my my big gold wing, it's like, ah. It's like a constant reminder of why I really, this big touring machine. Very dimble. When it's cool out, heated seats, heated grips. The foot warmers. I wish they would have put the foot warmers on the new Gold Wing, but they have to remove the foot warmers. Man, when it's cold out and you need to get a little bit of heat coming from that engine on this big Gold Wing, you just open up the, the foot warmers, and even though it warms your feet, it actually brings heat up around the around the seat area. 
you can actually feel that heat. So on those cold days, that, that really comes in handy to have heated foot warmers. Anyway, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I'm just out here rambling on the go wing, trying to get my ride in early this morning. If you guys have any questions or any comments about anything that I talked about here in this video, feel free to put it down in the comment section below. If you like these videos, would like to see more videos like these, please click that like button. And if you haven't already, please take the opportunity to subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is your boy Chris out on the gold wing out on the gold wing the most luxurious motorcycle in the world and I won't take it back the Honda gold wing GL 1800 the previous generation and I will as always I will talk to you guys later <laughs>